Hey there everybody. Um, so originally I had planned on making this video three months of uh, reading, but as I'm editing it, it's already a half hour and I only have two months in it. So I'm no books and Lala. I can't make videos that are like an hour and a half long each. No one's gonna watch them. <laughs> so I'm gonna cap this one at two months instead of three. You get a little earlier than planned. Um, so I'm gonna pass it over to me at the end of February and she'll tell you about the video. Hey there, everybody. We're doing this again. I'm gonna try and do another quarterly reading wrap up. Um, I really enjoyed doing the first one and I wanna do it a little differently this time because I noticed that for the books that I had read like two months prior to actually filming the video, I didn't really get to talk about the books the way I wanted to because they weren't as fresh in my mind. But I'm currently filming this section on February 28th and then I will theoretically film March and April, at the end of March and April. And so I might be wearing <laughs> the same outfit each time. The lighting might be a little different. Uh, I might be wearing different outfits all the time. Will I always be wearing an outfit with thumb holes? Probably. So I'll briefly go over the books that I talked about in my last reading wrap up. And then I'll talk about the rest of the books I read in February because this was a really good reading month for me. And I really hope I can continue this going forward. So hopefully they're a little more interesting. So if I'm reading more books, I kind of need to talk about them more fresh. So I'm also filming this before my first <laughs> reading wrap up goes live. So I don't really know right now if anyone actually watched it. Um, but if they did, if you did, and you're here for another one, hello. Uh, thank you for joining me. So this one's gonna go like the last one. I'm gonna talk about the book that I read. I will give you a brief synopsis as best I can that is somewhat spoiler free. Uh, and then I will give you my thoughts and my uh, my my star rating and I will try and keep this as spoiler free as possible. I think I did a pretty good job last time. Only time will tell. So I'm gonna go first into the books that I already talked about. Maybe give you some more thoughts now that I've been able to ruminate on them uh, and then I'll go into the books that I talked about that I was currently reading at the time when I filmed that last video and the books that I've read since because I've read a couple. There's not a ton new that I didn't talk about last time but I have some new thoughts. So the first book that I read in February that I mentioned in my last video was Fit at Any Age, It's Never Too Late by Susan Niebergall. So this one was my one uh, nonfiction for the for the month. Uh, it's Susan is uh, an online coach. Uh, she, you know, she's, she's fitness, health, wellness, whatever you want to consider that. Uh, she chronicles her life, you know, as she's gone through the different stages of yo-yo dieting and figuring out what fitness lifestyle works best for her and figuring out what she actually likes versus what she wants to portray that she likes uh, and how she got to where she is right now with her healthy lifestyle. And there are also um, some sample workout in the back of the book, uh, which I thought was really nice. I'm already a member of the Inner Circle, so I get all the workouts to begin with. So maybe I'll introduce those into my workouts. I don't really know. So if you're looking for a really nice fitness memoir, um, hers is really good. It's a, it's a really nice um, quick read. It's about 200 pages. You know, it's a quick read. If you want to get through it pretty quickly, you can probably finish this in about a day or two. I did. Uh, and I gave this one five stars because like I said in my last video for nonfiction, I'm either going to give it five stars or I'm not going to rate it at all. But that being said, five stars. Uh, the next book that I read uh, was Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. So this book is, it's a fake friends, enemies to lovers relationship book. It follows Alex. He is the first son of the president of the United States. And it follows Prince Henry, who is Prince of Wales. He's the he's the second he's the second son, and third born child of the of the of the royal family. So they cause a ruckus, we shall say, at Henry's brother's wedding, uh, in order to make up for the bad PR that this has now created. Because Alex's mom is currently up for re-election, um, they start to create a fake friendship, so that that way they can, um, you know, boost their PR a little bit, make the situation look a little better. Uh, and through that fake friendship, you know, they start to create a real friendship. And then this thing about fake friendships and fake relationships is they start to feel like real relationships after a little while. And then feelings happen. And that's pretty much what happened here. Uh, I greatly enjoyed this book. I gave this one five stars. Uh, it's, it's, it's just, it's got all those cheesy romance tropes that I just really, really love. A little, a little bit of enemies to lovers. You've got a little bit of fake relationship with the friendship. You got a little bit of like love that dare not speak its name. It's just, it's just really cute. Really, really cute. Um, gay romance and I greatly enjoyed it. It's it's a little over 400 pages so it's a little bit of a longer romance but I, it doesn't matter. It's a little bit of a slow burn and then you kind of get into like them just being together and then you get into them really expressing the fact that they really have feelings for one another and then 
stuff happens. Uh, and it's a really cute, really cute romance. So if you're looking for a cute gay romance, this is the one for you. Following Red, White, and Royal Blue, I jumped into Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. This one follows Grace. She's just completed her PhD in astronomy and she goes off to Las Vegas to celebrate with her, uh, her girlfriends and she gets drunk and she marries a stranger. <laughs> that's, for the most part, that's the premise of the book. After, you know, the dealing with the marriage and figuring out who the wife is, um, Grace does go off to New York where her wife lives and meets her, spends time with her, kind of escapes the pressures that she's having post uh, post PhD because she's really having a hard time dealing with a lot of the gatekeeping in the academic community. She's feeling like an outsider. She's dealing with the pressures that she's put on herself, the pressures that's been put on put on her by her family. And she's using New York kind of as a little bit of a breather just to kind of figure out what it is that she really wants. Um, that's, the, that's the gist of the book. I don't really want to go too far into it because beyond that really is we're going to go into spoiler territory. Um, this one I will say I gave this one I gave this one four stars mostly because I felt like I wanted more of the romance. Like there wasn't as much of it as I had expected. I think I said that in my last video. The romance is there. It's more of a subplot to the self-realization coming of age kind of storyline going on. There wasn't as much romance as I was expecting based on the blurb. And I did find the relationship to be a little bit insta-lovey, rushed a little bit, which I don't mind insta-love in certain contexts. But with this one, like, I understand people will click and they will get on really well from the start, but in this case it just felt like there wasn't enough context for them to immediately get comfortable with each other. That was what knocked it down to a, to a four from a five for me. It was it was a really good story and I really appreciated it. Uh, I will say there is some content warnings. Uh, there's a full list of them on Morgan Rogers' website, but the main ones that I noticed were um, there's discussions of mental health and mental illness, there's depictions and descriptions of self-harm, there's some alcohol and drug use in it, um, if you don't like that. Um, so just be warned, but if you want the full list of, there's a very comprehensive list of content warnings on Morgan Rogers' website. What, it was more my own expectations, really. I was expecting more romance, I didn't get it. Um, and I thought that the romance, I would have liked to have seen a little more build up. So following, um, Honey Girl, I went right back into romance, uh, and I, read The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. Uh, this one, it uh, follows Stella. She's a high power econometrician. I am probably saying that wrong. She's a high powered economist. Uh, and she is on the autism spectrum. And she has issues with, with affection and touch and, uh, with people that she's unfamiliar with. And her parents are like, we want grandchildren. How you doing with that? Um, and she being the people pleaser that she is, she wants to give that to them, but she wants to do it in a way that makes her comfortable. So she hires an escort, a male escort, to teach her more or less how to be amorous and affectionate with somebody. And so we follow Stella and Michael. They go first to start, it starts off with just the lessons that kind of then turns into a fake relationship, which then turns into everyone falls in love because it's a romance. It's got to have a happy ending. This one was very steamy. I did appreciate it. It's like, cause I don't, I like books that have explicit content in them. I'm not looking for a book that is only explicit content. I will put that out there, but I think there's a time and place if that's what you've set up in your story. I don't like it when it feels out of place because sometimes it feels like authors will just stick a sex scene in there. There's no context for it in the rest of the story. The rest of the story doesn't feel like there's been a lot of build up to this graphic scene. In this case, it's there's a lot of it sprinkled throughout the book, so it's not as jarring as when a book might have one really graphic sex scene in it. Um, and I also, if if the tone fits, I prefer graphicness to a fade to black or like a line break. If it fits, it's fun to read for me. I don't usually mind it. I know that's a personal opinion. Not everyone really enjoys graphicness, and that's okay. That's everyone's personal opinion. Um, I gave this one four stars. I don't really know why. I'm gonna go with I gave this one four stars for the lack of LGBTQ representation solely for the fact that there is none. There is not I might have missed something. There is not one <laughs> LGBTQ character in this book. I'm not saying that the book has to have it for me to enjoy it because I enjoyed the book. I really did. And I don't even need it to have LGBTQ plus um, leads. At this point, I guess I just expect at least one character, <laughs> one. 
so that's just a personal preference i think that's what brought this down to a four star for me but if you don't care about that this could be a five star for you i thought it was a cute story i thought it was well written i really enjoyed it i read it pretty quickly um but just there's no queer characters none <laughs> so it's four stars for me for that basically following that i read two graphic novels in a series because they're my library only had the first two uh, so I read volumes one and two from Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. So these, this graphic novel series follows Charlie and Nick. Uh, they're two boys in, it's, it's set in the UK, so I don't know what the, it's high school for high, for Americans. I don't know what the exact equivalency is in the UK, maybe secondary school. I don't know. I don't know how the British school system works. Uh, no, Charlie is already out and gay and he befriends Nick and they become really good friends and then it becomes more than friends. There's some relationship build up in the first two, um, but that's all I could read. I can't read the others because my library doesn't have them, so I'm stuck with just one and two for right now. Um, I enjoyed them. They're cute. These are a nice, like, YA, um, YA contemporary graphic novel about two boys falling in love. I think it's really cute. Uh, I wanted something light and I want something really, really gay. <laughs> Um, and I got it. Boy, did I get it. Um, they're just really cute. I just, I, you know, I shipped the two of them. They're adorable and I want them to be happy. Five stars. <laughs> this last book that I read and completed in the month of February, I listened to the audiobook uh, for this one. So this one is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I did not expect to love this book as much as I did. I should, let me start. Description, synopsis. So the book follows the titular character, Evelyn Hugo. She is chronicling her life as a Hollywood actress in the golden age of cinema, the late 50s, early 60s. Uh, she's telling her life story to this writer, Monique, so that she can sell her book when she uh, when she passes away and you know sell her life story and make lots of money. Um, and, you know, she's explaining why she was married so many times. Uh, that's the basis of it. I can't go into more without spoilers, which is unfortunate because I want to just scream about this book. Um, I listened to this one on the audiobook. Uh, it's got three narrators, as I mentioned last time. It's, there's one narrator for Monique, there's one for Evelyn, and then there's one for the multimedia elements of publications, both current and in the past, to give you some more context and also to kind of help along with some time jumps as she kind of explains her life. How do I explain this book? <laughs> How do I express my deep abiding love for this book? This was one that I had read kind of as like a booktube made me do it situation because I just heard so many good things. So many people had said this book was amazing and I just wanted to see what it was about. I'm not someone who cries while reading a book, usually. I'll, I'll cry if a book, and it's a, I'm not, not waterworks, it's a couple of tears. I'll cry when a book is over if I really enjoyed it because it's over and I'm sad about that. Um, I was sobbing. The LGBTQ plus rep in this book is phenomenal. Like, not only is it there's just a lot of it, it's very well done. It's extremely well done. The relationships are, they feel real. They're very, they feel like people that you know. Like, I, I went into this for the Hollywood gossip aspect because I just kind of really enjoy that because I'm kind of trash for it. Honestly, if it had just been Hollywood gossip, I probably would have stopped listening for after the first two hours but it's just so much more. I want to tell you more, but I can't because I will spoil things. And I can't do that because this book has quite a few twists in it. And I, if you're going to read this, I want you to read them and not be spoiled for them. Um, the audiobook was, um, was amazing. The three narrators were just, were, they brought the characters so much more to life, which is something that I don't say a lot about audiobooks because I normally audiobooks are fine. They're a way to consume the book. This one, I think the audiobook really does enhance the experience because you do have the different narrators. And like at one point, one of the narrators really did sound like she was crying while she was reading this. And I was just like, I, I sobbed. There were moments when I literally felt like the breath knocked out of me. Like I knew that they were coming, but then they happened and I just went, <gasps> like I just didn't know what to do because <laughs> it was happening. Um, I cannot express in non-spoiler terms, why this book made me so happy. It just did. It's very well written. The characters are well, well developed. Uh, when things happen to them, you're happy. When bad things happen to them, you cry. I was driving home while I was listening to the last hour and a half. I was sobbing. Could not see where I was going. 
And I saw these moments coming. I knew that I knew that these moments would make me cry because I knew they were coming. And then I cried anyway. <laughs> Five stars. Five stars for Evelyn Hugo. Uh, this, so like I said, I did listen to this one on audiobook. Uh, I did order this one from Book of the Month with my March book um, because I want it on my shelf. This one, it needs to just arrive and be on my shelf with me. Uh, and I'm kind of hoping that if I read it with my eyes versus with my ears, it will kind of recapture a little bit of that first time experiencing it. Because if there was ever a book that I wish I could experience for the first time again, it's The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I didn't think I would find a book this year that I liked more than The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I was mistaken. <laughs> this one's amazing. Um, so... Highly recommend. Five stars. Now that you've endured this rambling, I'm going to send things over to March Me at the end of March, and she will tell you about the books that I read during March. Okay, so we are into the March portion of this video. Uh, I, as you can see, we've got another setup here, and for once, not anything, no thumb holes this time. I'm coming at you from the 1st of April, so March is officially over. Um... <laughs> My reading this month has been very, very bad. Um, this month, I don't know what happened. I don't know what kind of reading slump I put myself into. I don't know what happened. Um, not for lack of trying. I started a lot of books. I started, I want to say, like six or seven books. And I finished one. <laughs> one book. Which, originally my goal was one book a month. So one book in the month of March is still technically on goal, even though I upped my goal to 24 books. Uh, or 25 books, something like that. Um, so this month I'm gonna go over some of the books that I didn't finish on purpose, um, as well as some books that I started that I plan on finishing, because um, they're interesting. I'm just having trouble getting through them for whatever reason. Um, and this time I actually have books to show you. <laughs> I don't have to just put up graphics, or at least dust jackets. <laughs> so we'll start on a good note with the one book that I actually finished this month, and that is the stars we steal by alexa dunn so the stars we steal is um a it's a pers it's kind of a persuasion retelling in space so her it's a companion to her first book brightly burning it's set in the same post-apocalyptic world where humanity had to leave earth and now like all of the nations and everything are on these ships that are just orbiting the earth after like i think a volcano like clouded the sun and created like a super frost or whatever. This one is set 70 years, I think, prior to the beginning of the first book. Uh, and it follows Leo, who is a descendant of like, I think German royalty or something like that. Um, and it follows the Vogue season that they have. Kind of more like Bachelor in Paradise, I will say it's more like that than regular Bachelor, but coming from a Bachelor nerd, that's what we got. It follows her and like, no, there's, a, there's an ex that comes and shakes things up and there's a murder mystery and all these fun things and it's all set in, on the ship that's orbiting earth um so you've got that going i'm doing a terrible job of explaining this i mean it's a companion so it's a separate story but and she does quite a bit of world building that you don't get from the first one um but it's one of those things where you kind of have to have read it to kind of get all of the world building aspects very much enjoy brightly burning i gave that one four stars uh and i gave this one four stars as well i believe um, I'd have to check. I will put the correct number right here. This is the book that I said that it took, like, I started it right before the pandemic happened, started last year, and then I don't really know what happened. I just stopped reading, and so it's no fault of the book. I almost called it The Fault in Our Stars. Did I call it The Fault in Our Stars before? I really hope I didn't, but no fault to the stars we steal at all. Uh, it is not the book's fault. It is mine. I really liked it. I, I loved the characters. I loved, uh, Evgenia. I think is how you pronounce her name. I think. I could be wrong. She's one of the people that comes with the ex, as you know, and like shakes things up and she's just unapologetically a lesbian and I love it. There's a ton of queer rep in this one and she does it really like there's there's lesbians, there's gay men, there's non-binary people, there's asexual representation which you don't see a lot. She, she does a very good job of fleshing out all of her characters, even the minor ones, which makes you root for them and I really appreciate that. Um, I love the way she writes. I really do. Um, I don't read a ton of YA anymore. That I should have said that before. <laughs> this is YA sci-fi. Um, I don't read a ton of YA anymore, um, but I still, I really enjoy her writing style, so I usually do read her YA. So yeah, I think I gave this one, I gave this one 
four stars something like that um i re i really enjoyed it i thought it was just it was a good story and i'm glad that it i got to finish it this month because i've had it for so long i'll do the books that i intentionally dnf'd and why i intentionally dnf them and then i'll go into the books that i'm currently reading that i plan on finishing i think that's a good way to end this on a good note the first book that i read that i tr that I, tr I tried i tried so hard to like or at least to read was um one to watch by Katie Stamen London, I think is her name. This one follows um, a woman named B or Beatrice. She's a plus size fashion influencer um, and she gets an opportunity to be the lead on this universe's um, version of The Bachelor, Bachelorette called Main Squeeze. And I originally started reading it because I'm I'm writing a story that like the, the the main concept that I have for it pretty much is just the bachelorette but make it bisexual. There's more to it than that, but that's the main concept that I tell people. So I was reading this kind of as a, as for research just to see how someone else would handle this the show aspect and how much do they take from the bachelor bachelorette? How much do they change? things like that to kind of see what I could get away with um, as I designed my version. And honestly, I liked the way that it was set up. I liked the combination of narration with text and emails and entertainment articles. I really like that. And that's kind of what I want to do with mine. I, don't, I think I read the first hundred pages. I think I gave it a good try. What made me stop reading it was the main character. I, I can't think of a better way to, to, to phrase this. I would have liked her better if her whole personality wasn't the fact that she was fat. I understand that that is a main part of the concept, that she is a fat woman doing this and being in the public eye and all that comes with it, but she had no other personality other than, I am a fat person. How are they going to react to me because I'm fat? Everything was because she was fat. I understand that when you are of a certain size, it affects your day-to-day -day life. I understand that it shapes the way that you see things. But even people that it shapes the way things, there's more to them than that. And it just felt like that's all that she was, was a, a fat person. By the, I think I made it through like the, like the first two weeks of them filming. Like I didn't get very far into the narrative, but I got pretty far, I got at least a quarter into the book. And it's just, maybe she got better. And then there was also some pining with like an old friend that she slept with that I kind of just didn't care about. <laughs> Honestly, I just didn't care. <laughs> just in the first act and into the second, into the beginning of the second act, she just, she couldn't make me care about the character. And that was just enough for me to just, I, if I don't care about the POV character, I'm just not going to keep reading. That's basically what it is. So that's why I stopped reading this. Uh, there's no rating. There's nothing. I DNF'd it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> the second book that I DNF'd was an audiobook. And this one wasn't anything to do with the book itself. This was more the fact that I think that I did the audiobook. I think if I'd read it, I would have been fine. Um, was uh, Call Me By Your Name by Andre Alsaman. Again, I could be saying the name wrong. I've already seen the movie. What it's about is there's a boy, Elio. He lives with his parents in Italy. Um, and his parents are like professors. And this guy, Oliver, who I guess is like a student of his of his father's whatever he, he lives with them for the summer he's like in his like mid late 20s elio is 17 like they start like a illicit affair relationship i don't know what you want to call it it's the movie with uh army hammer and timothy chalamet um and that is relevant to why i just like this so i already wasn't the biggest fan of the movie but i'd heard good things about the book so i thought maybe i'll give it a try i needed a new audiobook to listen to it was available in my library without a wait Let's give it a go. It's narrated by Army Hammer. It's also from Elio's perspective, which is why I was confused. I think I think that hurt my brain a little bit. I think if I hadn't seen the movie already, it wouldn't have bothered me as much because I didn't have an idea, whatever. The the kind of the like the whole point of call me the call me by your name is that they start calling each other by their own name. So yeah, maybe that's why they went with Army Hammer instead of Timothy Chalamet, or maybe because Army Hammer was available. I don't really know. I also hate Army Hammer's voice. I don't like him as a person from what I've seen on, on uh, the internet, and his voice creeps me out. So I think I listened to an hour and a half of it, and I just kind of said, I can't do this. Um, I might try again and read it with my eyes. I don't know if that'll make it any better. I just, I think it was the choice of Army Hammer narrating it that 
made it unlistenable for me. Uh, I liked the writing style. I thought it was very poetic. I thought it, I mean, there were parts that were a little crass, but they, so was the movie. So um, it didn't really, that didn't matter. I wasn't the biggest fan of the narration. That's all that it was, was the narration. Okay, so now that I've gone through the books that I DNF'd on purpose, <laughs> I'm going to go into the books that I am currently reading and uh, that I plan to finish at some point. So the first one was my, uh, was my March book of the month book. This is, I'm just going to show you dust jackets because the books are in use somewhere. Um, so it was my, my March book of the month pick, and that is The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. Just take a moment to appreciate this cover and all, it's beautiful. It's just a gorgeous cover. And there's a map in the book. I love books with maps. It's, it follows two timelines. It follows an apothecary in the late 1700s. Um, her name is Nella and a girl, Eliza, who comes to her because she's an apothecary who she helps women by getting rid of the men in their lives. <laughs> she gives them the medicine to get rid of the illness in their life that is the abuse of men. So Eliza comes to get something for her to for her master to you know and all that and then they go on about something. I've I haven't finished it so I don't know how it ends. Um and the other timeline is uh, a woman in present day uh Caroline She's in London after she, on what should have been her anniversary trip with her husband. She found that he was cheating. She came by herself. She happens upon a relic that kind of leads her down the path to discovering what happened to Nella and Eliza. I think, again, I'm like maybe a hundred pages in something like that. This is slow going for me. And I think because of the writing style, um, I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe that this is uh, her debut novel. And... This is not a dig. This is just a comment. It reads like a debut novel, and to me, I mean, that could mean that could mean debut novels come in all shapes and sizes. But the way that it's written, the narration style, it's very reminiscent of how I would currently write the story. This is not me digging at Sarah Penner's work, and this is not me saying that my work is ready to be published because it's not. Uh, this is me saying the way she describes things, the way she like has a moment of action followed by five paragraphs of background information and then more into the action. Like she'll, she'll like, something will trigger a memory, something that's happening to Caroline, let's say, trigger a memory. And then the next page and a half is that memory. And then I go back to the action for like two pages and then something else happens and that triggers another memory that then, again, this could be because I'm just in the, I'm in the first half of the book. So maybe once I get through that part and I get into more of the action, it'll stop, that'll stop happening. But by page 120 something or 50 that I'm on, it hasn't stopped happening yet. It's very reminiscent of how I would write the story, which is why I think it's moving a little slowly for me. This could be a little faster paced. And the switching between Caroline and Nella and Eliza to me feels disjointed, but I'm guessing at some point they have to connect. Because right now it's just what's happening woman discovering what had happened so i'm trying to f i guess once i get to a point they'll start to be kind of one cohesive plot um but like the jumping feels kind of disjointed and i'd kind of rather stay in like the plot with nell and eliza than with caroline i kind of don't care but i care more about caroline than i did about b in one to watch so there is that now, if i'm gonna give this one a prediction a rating prediction i would say maybe that this one it could be a three star. I think if it stays on the trajectory that it's on, it'll probably be about a three star, which is not bad. It's three stars is fine. Uh, I, I rarely give things below three stars usually. So, um, cause if I'm, if I really don't like a book, I'm just not going to finish it as evidenced by those other two books that I, <laughs> that I talked about. So that's the lost apothecary. Uh, and the other book that I started that I plan on finishing at some point, uh, is, Infinity Reaper by Adam Silvera. This is the sequel to Infinity Sun that came out in March. Um, this one's a chunky book. This one's, this is a big dust jacket. This is like 500 something pages where the first one was like maybe 300. Um, I was not expecting it to be like a chunky boy. Um, this one picks up right where the last book le left off. So to recap this world, uh, it follows Brighton and Emil, these two brothers. Um, that they live in a world where, pe where people have magical powers. They're called uh, celestials. And then there are people that take magical powers upon themselves from other creatures uh, that are real. Uh, and they are called specters. Uh, and they're battling it out. 
because that's what mythical people do in urban fantasy. So there's a whole other deep plot about like this one character trying to um, create blood that will give her like the power from multiple um, creatures so that she'll never die. So in the end of the last book, which I don't want to go through spoilers because spoilers are bad, but this is a sequel so I kind of have to, um, Brighton does a thing at the end of the first book. I'll leave it at that. Emil is the one that had the powers. Brighton does a thing. Uh, so the book immediately takes place right like seconds like the second that the first book ends uh, where Brighton has done the thing and now what do we do uh, and then more battle ensues. I said in the f in my talk about the first book that I didn't think that two out of the four perspectives mattered. I didn't think they were necessary. I can get a sense that in the second book they will make more they will be more necessary because I think the, the action is going to be split up more. Um, like I said, like it, it was mostly Emile and Brighton and Emile's perspective really mattered more in the first book. Um, this In this book, it's very valuable to have uh, Brighton's perspective as well as Maribel and Ness. I understand why he did it in the first book, even though they weren't really necessary in the first book, but just to kind of set us up to have that multiple perspective in the next one. And I think this is going to be a trilogy. I think there's going to be one more, but don't quote me on that. So I've read like 20 pages of this one. Like, Look at this. this. This is a chunky book. Um, I've read yeah, 26 pages just because this month has just been hard on reading. That's all I can really say. Um, but I do plan to finish it as best I can at some point. I do have my, my April book of the month book coming. That is um, People We Meet on Vacation by uh, Emily Henry, I believe is her name. I need, a rom I need a romance in my life. I could just read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo again. <laughs> I could always do that, um, but I think I'm gonna try and read the uh, people people we meet on vacation. Romance is better than no romance, right? <laughs> All right, that was my mishmash of reading attempts in March. I don't even want to call that my reading recap. That was all attempts except for one book. <laughs> Again, this video is long enough as it is, so if you're still here, thank you very much. Um, it's been a lot of fun to make these videos and I think I'm gonna keep doing them every two months. That way I can talk a little bit more about the books and the videos won't be three hours long. If you got to this far, thank you for watching. I post new videos twice a month on the 1st and the 15th of the month. Um, mostly I post about fountain pens, ink, and stationery, but I'm adding some uh, bookish videos into the mix just because it's stuff that interests me. Um, so thank you for watching. Uh, if you've made it this far, please think about liking, commenting, subscribing. Let me know how your reading has gone the past couple of months. Uh, and I will see you all in the next video. Have a great day, book friends. I'll see you later.